there's also an underlying story to it, which obviously I can't go into too much, but um, I am rambling. So if you're interested, come to my chat and do exclamation point Easter event. You'll see the document, the signups will go out soon once the map is completed, and I've got all the eggs and stuff. And uh, anyway, let's do... Want to go ahead and rebrief? Our jobs. Yeah, let's do our jobs. Oh, for fuck's sakes, I haven't set up the... Okay, I, I lied, I haven't set up the command. All right. Um, I'll set up in a second. Should I do background do while before. you do that, then? Uh, no, it's fine, I'll do it. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> the... <clears throat> I don't know, uh, we'll do a voice. Just voice fucking... it. My voice. The hot and poor region is now facing another difficulty. The new extremist group that is on the rise in the Alibad, Aliabad region. From what the USMC intel says, they have multiple ammo caches in the area that have to be destroyed. Area of operations? Sand. All right, we're not going to see Darth Vader anywhere. Uh, no mission-specific rules. Cool, there was just a car crash outside of my house. Anyway, I'm not sure if the mic caught any of that, but I don't care. Uh, the objective to ammo caches on the uh, outside Damn. there. Damn, that was loud. Uh, mission variables, uh, we've got 50-minute uh, rounds. Um, safe start's going to be 50 minutes. Usually that doesn't change. Maximum view distance, 900 meters. No magnified optics, nor night vision equipment. Defender, 4 to 5 points is going to be 125. Uh, that is going to be... That's the standard, usually. Uh, but otherwise, uh, mat settings, we have them listed here. Blue 4 getting smalls, up 4 getting RPGs. Uh, three rounds of uh, AT per RPG and one HE round per person, which means uh, per team, because you have the AT guy and the assistant, uh, it would be 6 and 2. Blue 4, it would be 4 and 2, because they get uh, HE and um, AT. Otherwise, looking at Blue 4 here, you got the, um, to do the breakdown again. Uh, platoon leader, platoon sergeant, squad leader, team leader, assault rifle, uh, or excuse me, auto rifleman, auto rifleman assistant, grenadier, grenadier IR, which stands for um, hunt IR. They get the, uh, you know, hunt IR cameras that they can fire out of the 40 millimeter launcher. And then they have a little tablet they use to see from the camera as it parachutes down to the ground, basically a scouting tool. Machine gunner, machine gunner assistant, um, combat engineer, light anti-tank, mat one, mat assistant one, mat two, mat assistant two. So, you know, these two guys are per team. Uh, recon Infantry, uh, Recon Infantry Scout, which are the suppressed shooters. Uh, designated Marksman looks like it's going to be a Mark 11 for Blue 4. That's why I like to look at this, because it's the only way to identify uh, what that weapon is without trying to dig four people. Uh, sniper looks like an M2010, uh, but we'll see that again. Uh, crew Leader, Crew, uh, Pilots, Medical, and then the Base Kit. Uh, for those infantry. But anyway, uh, standard U.S. Marines is going to be uh, M27s, which are fully automatic uh, M4s. Uh, and then you have a standard M4A1 as well. M9 Brett as a secondary 249s, 240 Bravos. Uh, M136s for the light anti-tank. The M40A5, that's what I was looking for. Not the M2010. The M40A5 is going to be for the uh, sniper. And then the uh, suppressed shooters get a choice of the M14 or the Silicon 16. Both 20 round 762 by 51 um, battle rifles uh, with suppressors on it. Um, then we have an MP7 or an M4A1 as the crew in aviation. Uh, nothing on the crew served weapons. Assets-wise, uh, we're going to have two M2s and then transports in the mix of Humvees and trucks, uh, Alon, all of that. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that is it for Blue 4. I'll talk about the cars in a second. Just let me, uh, let's finish this real quick. So Blue 4 has a choice of two different spawn points. Uh, Green 4 is going to be defending all the way up here. Alabad. I mean, it's a small map. I think, honestly, yeah, this AO is going to be doing pretty much the entirety of the map itself, interestingly enough. But looking at Green 4 here, uh, we've got... It's, uh, under In 4 here. Oh, God. Thank God, Dream. You Whoa. see under Uniform, in case I wasn't able to read oh the text. Oh, my God. You see, there it this is. is. This is for me. This is a personal oh, yeah. thing I ask because my eyesight's so bad, I need it, I need it this close. Snorkel, by the way, means that the vehicle literally has a snorkel. I just forget what the snorkel's for. Snork. But it, it does have a snorkel system. Um, but again, I, I don't remember why. Uh, their... Matt, no, I'm looking. Where is their designated marksman? SVDs, you can tell by the little camo on the front of that. Uh, loadouts, we're going to have AKMs, AKSs, 
Ah, oh, the crew in aviation got the choice between the AKS or the PP2000. Dang, I was hoping for a 74 v 74 like usual. Um, recon suppressed shooters get the choice of either the AKS with 45 round mags or the AS Val. Again, I always recommend the AKS. Uh, Sniper gets a T5000 RPG 26 for the light anti tank. Uh, support gunners, uh, lights, machine gunners are going to get the RPK 74. Medium machine gunners are going to get the PKP. Uh, otherwise, nothing on there. CSW, they're going to get four motorbikes. I'd assume that is for recon. Uh, two transport cars for uh, <laughs> just for people to drive around, probably command. Uh, two Hillux Dishkas. I would highly recommend Green 4 uses those early on uh, to counter any Blue 4 convoys coming in. And then two cord statics that they should probably put at the cache sites themselves to help defend them. Otherwise, uh, that should be it for everything. Going ahead and breaking down the roster. Uh, Blue 4 is going to be led by Pierce. Dream, what are your thoughts on Pierce? Then, awesome. Uh, redacted. Okay. Well, Pierce is one of the uh, better commanders, I would say, in FNF. He's the, one oh, of yeah, the guys probably. that does it uh, very often. The only issue I have with Pierce is sometimes he comes up with really, really dumb plans that mm -hmm. 9 out of 10 blow up in his face, but 1 out of 10 are just so metally dumb that they just they completely overpower the enemy and how they've set up. I don't really know how else to explain I'm, all it. All I'm going to say is majority it, of the time, they do fail, and they fail spectacularly. Yes, but then that other percentage is but he just somehow they completely... Well, they e succeed. Even though there's no reason for it to work properly, the only reason it works is because in his mind, what he was trying to do, or maybe he wasn't trying to do, but his plan that he made just happened to completely counter what the enemy did. I still think of a few where it was just so dumb how it happened but he won so that's all that matters at the end of the day Korvac's going to be his 2IC mm -hmm. Saddam Tain his uh, platoon medic Maz leading the X-Ray uh, Despo taking the M40A5 sniper Sushi uh, he has his bino out he's going to be the uh, team 2IC because he has uh, the, uh, the M27 behind him which means Sayak and Timek are going to be the suppressed gunners it doesn't really matter which gun they take uh, I think Timek has the Mark 14 EBR Sayak with the SOCOM 16 again both are the um, pretty much the same uh, Norris leading Alpha HQ, uh, keeping the teams differentiated. Norris, really good note. Uh, he's not rocking a uh, machine gun, though. Uh, that is his preferred role. Uh, but otherwise, Night Owl uh, rocking Alpha. We got Iqbal, Wolf, Vigran, and Graven Artisan under him. Rory has Tackleberry 2600, Ash, Eric, Swola, and Banks with him under Alpha 2. Nemesis from Scandia Recon leading Bravo HQ with Iander Azariah taking the smog because Iander doesn't want to touch it. Whiplash, <laughs> N1, Malin, Yanni, and Arcor. Uh, Bravo has Nafs leading with Calls, Perton, Katz, Dobbs, and Gaby, and I want to see how they redeem themselves uh, today, because round one, they got absolutely slaughtered. Charlie One has uh, members of 1RW with uh, Wise, Newton, Ant, Barrett, Ruffs, uh, Guzman all together. Uh, they are being led by Johnson, and it looks like they merged the teams to form one large group. Same with Delta being led by our friend Emzikoff. Uh, from Fatal Puppy Squad, uh, he's got Matura, Professional Noob, Miss Beer, uh, DJ Zymel, Broken, uh, Colonel Arcane for the 82nd, uh, Gimboju, Darup, uh, Rastafari, and Kiko with him uh, under that group. Otherwise, uh, for Green Four, we have uh, Tender Banner leading. Now, this is interesting because Tender Banner was the 2IC of Op4 who completely stomped out blue four in the last round however i think that was more of just a positional thing because there wasn't really a lot of things op four needed to do command wise so i'm not going to give him too much of the benefit in that Send leadership of being the two i see from the winner six. of the last round because now. i don't think it would have helped him out that much because it was just a pretty simple defense of all objectives in the same area but we'll see what he's able to do today kiri being his two i see and then falcon being the platoon medic which means he has a lone wolf pass and he will definitely <laughs> use it that's the best way to use falcon in my opinion uh just ask ofcra dab anyway oddball leading x-ray uh we got jack taking the t5000 seven uh being the two ic for the team and wolfer being the single suppress shooter with an as file we don't see a second suppress shooter up there interesting uh lolo leading alpha hq actually i think alpha 2 and alpha hq merged and i think they took uh the vehicle crews um, because we see Nebs with the PP2000 because the vehicle groups are given individually to the squads. So I think Lolo's the team leader for Alpha 2, and he's just merged with that vehicle crew to work with him. So uh, probably one of the Dishka cars. Um, 
which also means that they're probably, because we don't see a dedicated driver and gunner for the Dishkas, it means they're probably going to use them at the squad level instead of counterattacking Blue Force convoys as they come in, which in my opinion is a mistake, considering Blue Force has a 12% numbers advantage and will honestly wipe the floor with Green Force, in my opinion, because of that high number, but we'll see. Uh, Nebs being that uh, vehicle crew guy, Lolo being the team leader for Alpha 2, merged with Alpha HQ with Fred, Nader, Shy, Green Thumb, Seismo, Patriot, and Olaf together. Uh, Alpha 1 has Dingo leading with Revenge, Autoviski, Spike ERP, G likes Kabaya and Sam. Bravo HQ has uh, uh, Alec. I'm not going to finish the name because then my own little device listening bullshit thing upstairs hears me and starts playing Despacito and it's copyrighted. Uh, Bojan, Aijin, uh, Tomek, Pavla, Pavlovic, Esko, uh, Doki, Halandi, and Benjamin all under Bravo HQ. It looks like they all merged. Charlie HQ, this is a saving grace that Green 4 has. They have a Pega Pirates, but Pega Pirates got like 25 kills last round together. Um, with Coda getting nine with the machine gun. So we'll see if they're able to help nullify the number advantage here. Uh, but that's only because they were in a good defensive position. Uh, if they are against like an entire force on their own, they can hold pretty well, but they will eventually be overpowered. We've seen it time and time again. But Keen leading with Kick here. Again, they've merged everything together. So it's just Charlie HQ. Kick here, Coda, Tom, Rovin. Uh, sideways events, Arma Jesus, Flux, Legal Action, Michael, Shade, and Guy Fieri. Again, the fearsome foursome of Guy Fieri, Legal, Arma, and Keener all together. However, again, Coda got like freaking nine kills last round. And he's a PKP gunner. He was a PKM gunner last time. So I'm going to be watching him to see how well he does this round as well. Delta HQ has three men, Navy Bar, and 30K. And then Delta 2 has uh, Steve, two, three members of 1RCC, and Ace, because I can never pronounce his uh, main name correctly. Coda has another code. Yeah, I know. I saw he has another cord as well because this was the exact combo we rocked last round to get those nine kills. A cord Jesus. and a PKP. So I'll be really curious to see how he's able to lock this down. Um, Papega, I mean, they're very good iron sight marksmen and this is going to be an iron sight fight uh, or a one times uh, scope fight. So I'm these big open areas, I think Papega has a big amount of room to win. But statistically, with a 12% number advantage and Green 4 not committing anything to counterattack early on with their uh fast moving uh dishka hilluxes i feel like statistically the odds are in blue force favor but based off of papega's performance last round you could make a reasonable bet on papega uh and falcon here on uh green four as well and i think they have a chance i would say the split should be 60 percent blue four 40 percent green four um but it's it's gonna depend on the early game which is gonna really just result on how well Papega does, but looking at the two sectors here, it is a two cache hunt. So Blue Four needs to destroy two caches or completely eliminate Green Four to win. Green Four need to hold the caches for 50 minutes or completely eliminate Blue Four to win. Cache sites are known, but not where specifically in the site they are. So Blue Four would only see this box right here, but the cache is specifically in one of these buildings, which we can go ahead and try to find. Normally we have a marker, uh, like a green map mark, or excuse me, a red map marker on our interface to see where they specifically are. But it looks like we don't today. So here is the first cache right there. Second cache is uh, in one of these two buildings, which, I mean, it's kind of obvious where it would be if there's only two buildings to hide it. Um, AT explosives would easily build the cache or just mag dump in it. Also note these little black shadows. They mean that these are pre-placed, um, excuse me, non-pre-placed buildings. So the mission maker deliberately put these here uh, for balance sake on the scenario. So a lot of open ground here between the caches that uh, excuse me, green four could really capitalize on um but two separate aos that's gonna be really tough to defend and we see x-ray already mounted up in motorcycles to go what look at coda like sideways his area and look how they fucking use their um <laughs> their budget yeah no i mean they've made this into a pretty yeah that's actually awesome really good. kill zone but i mean leave it to pega to make positions like these Almost 250,000 points in the pot. Now, real quick, uh, just, just as a record, because I don't want people to say I'm heartless, even though what I'm about to say is going to make me it heartless. Is. We have a few jackasses around my neighborhood with these, like, Aww. really fancy cars, which, Five again, I don't, I really don't care. But they take the fucking mufflers off and then we'll rev the engine yeah. at 3 a.m. And that is what you just yeah. heard crash outside, like, 15 minutes ago, <laughs> which is why I don't give a shit. In fact, I'm a little happy about it, because that means I'm not going to hear him rev the fucking engine at 3 a.m. Do you know what happens outside my house? My house got a roundabout right outside it. Mm. People at two, three in the morning come around with their fucking cars that can like slightly drift, yeah. and will attempt to do a full three sixty around the um yeah, the entire right? fucking uh, roundabout, and it's so annoying. Mm. Like I'll, now, I'll be honest, I'm not a car person. 
I Not can appreciate lot. a good car look, in, uh, look, though. I don't care. But if you're one of those jackasses that revs it at 2 or 3 a.m. while I'm trying to fucking sleep or, like, do late-night mission dev or oh, editing, uh, I I will kind of just stare from my window if you get into a fiery car crash and just sip my lemonade and continue about my day. I'm that's heartless. I know. That's why that's I knew they were different. I will actively come out and kick the shit of you while you're on fire. <laughs> well, see, that would get you in trouble, Dream, okay? Okay. I'll just say I was trying to put them out. I. Okay. With, anyway. my, with my feet and my fist. I see. Well, round's about to begin. Um, I know your feet can't put anything out because I sold pictures of it for I money. I know. And Sam has fallen. That would have been really dangerous if we had ticked over because Sam Sam fell off the minaret. Well, he'd still be alive, though, because uh, when you have the no, 50 no, minute save if, start. Yeah, but if the save start ended right Yeah, he and he fell, fell out, he would have died because um, mm. it makes players invincible. It doesn't make vehicles invincible, though. It's just quite funny. But... No, we've seen, we've seen vehicles explode. Yeah, time and time again. But otherwise, Green Fort, we got Kiri and Tender Banner, uh, the two uh, leadership elements going up to Hill 113. I would assume the scout from that location. We have a few members of Papega going down to Edmed Golan. Um, excuse me, Golan, probably to scout from the ridge just to see where blue four is coming honestly if i were blue four i would hit these objectives one at a time i'd focus on more than likely the right ao first uh which is the eastern side one have a force on the ridge covering as infantry moved in through the valley uh maybe have a third force of just a single squad or maybe even a single team on the far uh northeastern flank to come around and basically uh suppress and uh, assist my forces push in uh, and I would probably spend the first 20 minutes just systematically trying to find and eliminate any forces that Green 4 put outside of the cash sites uh, to make sure they wouldn't flank me later and then just systematically take everything down, really utilizing my number advantage. You, um, you think about this too much. I do, as someone that's Commanders spectated this for over a year and a half. I know, I know, I can dream. But see, here's the thing. The one mean. or two times we see it happen, Dream, like when King commanded King that one works. time and just absolutely annihilated Guys, the other side because he thought of it this it. way. If you think you can't make it in FNF as a commander, you can. All you have to do is think. Yeah, it's it's funny. Win. It's really funny to see. Uh, otherwise, Blue 4 doing a far dismount. Looks like they're going to do exactly as I said. Have a force on the ridge, cover, oh uh, cover and then have another force flanked. go through the valley. We're not going to see any right flanking force, but, you know, having two forces able to cover each other like this is good enough for me. All right, that's good enough for me. The one issue we're going to have here, though, is Papega's on the front line in a defensive position. But I said this earlier, Papega is really... When they fight the entire force in a target-rich environment, it's honestly a 50-50 of are they going to be able to pop everyone's head in time or is too much overlapping fire going to come in? Now, Blue 4 only has two Humvees. They don't have any other vehicles to help with support, which is going to make it tough. But ooh, so Pepega already doing a four-man ambush as Blue 4 starting to move uh, down in the valley in the open. Uh, no kills, though, which is actually surprising for Pepega. Even with Flux up here as a marksman. I mean, yes, this has definitely confused Blue 4. I'd love to see Green 4 X-Ray now come in and do a, uh, a flanking action to deliver enfilading fire on this position. But I think Green 4 X-Ray, I mean, they're all the way out in Woolak. I, I think they're going to be misplayed the entire operation, which is, again, what you normally see. I'm also seeing Blue 4 firing at their own X-Ray element because they're completely confused. And they're also firing further back uh, on Arkane's position. So the... Oh, this it's is brilliant. Vince and Swallow firing. This no, is Swallow brilliant. Firing at their friends. So Vince actually got picked off here. We also oh, see another uh, Papega member. Mike uh, Mikel is down. Uh, the rest of Green Force pulling back, but that's made Blue for do a little bit of blue on blue. Damn. I'm not sure if they... Yeah, no one died. No one got gone. wounded from that. The taxi is gone. So if this was a three objective... You could claim that that play was done to stall the clock by stopping Blue Force's dismount, but this is a two area objective, and the uh, mm. objectives honestly could be taken within 20 minutes of Blue Force Hall's ass uh, and does some really good PvP to fight through. <laughs> so you can't really That's go for that play work. with uh, uh, these two um, objectives being so close, but maybe we could see X Ray come in and engage, but. That's the one fear you have, even if you have veteran players like Papega, it's just so many guns turning up and firing at your position, eventually someone's gonna hit you. And if you're not able to start landing those headshots, then you're you're done essentially. <laughs> now, if Blue Four happened to lose their commander in that offensive operation, then 
I would probably be giving an early advantage to Green for because Pierce usually has plans that require a lot of coordination from him, at least in the early. But strat. that's why he stays back yeah. a good chunk of the time. As you like, you can see he's sitting in one of his um in one of his vehicles at the moment, just hanging out behind the yep. uh, the main force. Now we really need to see. I don't. Papega's messing around. They're shooting a few, few shots and throwing grenades at each other, which I find funny, but. We need to see X-Ray come around and do a flank. And it looks like they are starting to move south and come around here. They're starting to sight out Blue Force positions. But if we could see that sniper set up somewhere in one of the... Uh, I think they only have one suppressed shooter. But if he could get behind this line, that would uh, be amazing. We're seeing Alpha HQ. They're actually, instead of sending a squad on the northernmost side, they're going to have a Humvee do it to be quick and deliver over watching fire. And that is also a really good call. Uh, the only risk is if they run into an infantry squad on their own and don't immediately get out of there and give the enemy time to hit them with AT. But I'm liking Pierce's plan so far. Mm. And He's I'm a little worried about terrain. Green for. He's making really good use of his terrain with the first people they are going to come up against, which we don't normally see because uh, Pepega are normally the team who have fought last. Yeah. Uh, and that's why what makes them so effective. So it'll be interesting to see how they can run with the early uh, the early assault on them. Because and, and I'm telling the, you, sometimes they just completely fall flat when they fight well, yeah, this well, many players at once. It's well, it's a thing. toss up. They already have fallen somewhat flat. They've yeah, had they did lose two, two guys. Two yeah, they've had two people die. Which again, if this was a three objective and the objectives were more spaced out, we could claim they're going for a time defense. But only five rounds, one tenth of the round has gone by. Blue four already in striking position of the first cache within a kilometer, so I I think Blue 4 has it. We're not seeing a lot of maneuvering from Green 4. They're staying at that one compound just to overwatch. They need to move closer. Um, maybe while the attack's going on in a bod, you'll see Green 4 X-Ray come around the rear, but I, I doubt RPG it. Goes out? That was a small round, but to where? Don't know. Are X-Ray firing? No, nope, but Scandi Recon and Alpha One's firing at X-Ray. Oh. Maybe then? So Sniper's trying to hit stuff, but he's unable to. Most of Green 4, they're going to mount up in motorcycles and pull away. You've got yeah, Alpha stop. HQ pulling around. You hear a small round coming in. Uh, it goes over, though. You have to remember, that's not, um... It's not Yandy using this. Yeah, it's spells. Azariah. But he's trying... He's basically just forcing them to pull back at Who, that point. Is, is Jack standing up for you as well? On his motorcycle? Yeah. Yeah, they they might do that. Oh, Jack. Yeah, he just dismounted. It's because he was bipoded on the uh, motorcycle. I think he was still firing, didn't hear the order to pull out, so now he's a little pinned. I think with the smoke grenade, he'll still be able to get out of here, though. We're seeing Hunt IR rounds getting launched up in the air here. I think this is Blue 4 beginning their attack. And Papega is starting their defense. They're also joined with a few members from uh, Bravo. I think Bravo have committed. Nope, they're full force over here just across two fire teams. So we'll see if Green 4 is able to hold. They already lost a third guy, Shade, within... These fucking motorbikes, man. Pega got taken things. out. So three kills to Blue 4, and Blue 4 haven't lost... Nope, they lost to Zuki. So three to one so far, yep. but if Blue 4 continues to push that advantage, they'll be able to maintain more than that 12%. You got Korvac on the uh, M2 gun firing at that fortified building top that Code is trying to camp in. Um, getting some hits in the uh, cord gun too. He could destroy it. But at least those sandbags, it's really hard to penetrate a sandbag with uh, munitions. You need something bigger mm -hmm. than a 12.7. Uh, I think 14.5 can do a little bit of penetration on sandbags, uh, oh, but Code not 50. Next to yeah. yeah that was that shade. Oh, Code just got hit real hard. Yep, so that was actually penetration by the M2, but the sandbags again denying a lot of that uh, damage. And now you're seeing Papega doing a bit of a counter charge here. Flux got hit. He woke back up. Smoke's yeah, coming down. Cool. Hunt IR following uh, behind them. They're going to pull back. This Broven. That's exactly what you mean. Um, the Papega Pirates, they, they falter a huge squad. So when they've tried to push their like aggressiveness, you can see now something very rare. They're falling back because they realized it was not a very good idea. Yeah, it's, it's too open for them. Blue 4 is spread across way too much for them to make a charge to try to get on the flank of one of these forces. X-Ray, I do appreciate they gotten into another compound over, but they're not going to have any sight lines from there. Um, I I think this is going to be an early call for Blue 4, in my opinion. I, I don't see 
how Op4 for can win this. I mean, we got Strong. Roven up here, but he has no AT. Uh, he might have had a single shot disposable too, but missed it because I think he was going for the uh, Humvee. He's actually bleeding. That parachute was an anti right round. Roven. Basically, uh, a 40 millimeter grenade launcher round you can fire up in the air, and it's a camera that you can then activate and then look from. So it's a, oh! a scouting reconnaissance item. Cold what? tried to drag the, the cord yeah. back and just got nailed in the face. Yeah. Yo. Hey, I'm telling you, it's too many people. Too many people from too many different flanks. Now, if Blue 4 was coming from one attack angle, I think Papega would be able to hold, but they have to deal with an Overwatch element. They have to deal with two forces that have splintered off. One force coming in from the east. This is the main maneuvering force. The uh, central force with the Humvee has stayed up here and is doing Overwatch. They do have a guy dead up here. Uh, that might be Azuki's body. Yep, so still only one casualty for Blue 4 so far, but Green 4 are just getting picked off at this point because Blue 4 is doing a really great unified push here of their assets. Green 4 trying to come around. Uh, we have Alpha HQ coming up looking a different direction, but that's going to be the far right flanking force to probably get with the rest of Alpha. But I, I think Green 4 is in trouble at this point. Ooh, X-Ray is sitting right next to Norris. The M2 Humvee might... One of the M2 Humvees might be taken out here because he's got X-Ray right behind him and his Platoon HQ as well. Yeah. So, it's actually... That has uh, no, two IC and Saddam. Saddam. It's, only, it's actually... Yeah, it's only uh, Saddam in Oh, there. no, yeah, because Korvac's in a Humvee yeah. in a different spot. All right. So, you know, if I was Jack here, you're going straight for that gunner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I think X-Ray might be able to be a little bit effective here, but that fix is going to drive away. They're going to be able to steal that transport truck, too, though. Uh, are they going to... Yeah, so Saddam's mounting in that Humvee. I think they're just rendezvousing. You're hearing suppressed shots now coming up on them. And now they're going to drive at an angle they can't get hit. It's cats. It's cats. I think Malin so, just yelled at him, but now Blue Force pushed up that position. Enough, this is going to work out for him, though, because X-Ray's up there. Yeah, fun funnily enough. Oh, and okay, maybe not, but okay. Uh-oh. Got her oh, immediately oh, taken out. Uh, Gunner, sorry. No, it wasn't Norris. Norris jumps out. It's Oddball versus Norris. Odd Norris gets the first shot. To I mean, down. Norris is one of the really yeah. good players. Yeah, I'm not surprised with that at all. Rest of Green 4 is kind of held back here. They got their sniper. They're firing at uh, some Blue 4 guys running on the rear. Shot just went out to Swola. Swola's now turned around. He's looking back there. That's going to stall this assault a little bit. But again, Blue 4's major plan right now is they don't have to go fully aggressive on the objectives yet. Fine. They just need to take out the overwatching Honestly, elements that Green 4 has, eliminate them, and then continue on. Go ahead. If I'm Jack here, I'm 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 running. I like there is no point in staying here because your squad lead's just gone down, and yeah. you should really know at this point that you're being pushed. So it, there's no point in laying here anymore. You just need mm -hmm. to move because you don't have the firepower. You they have what? Yep. So uh, an AK. Scandi being very aggressive here, popping GLs up. Now the real question is: Is Blue Four now going to break their forces apart? and now start putting less forces up to let the remnant of Papega Ooh, start awesome. taking them out. This could be where it turns around for Green Force favor, all because of X-Ray doing a bit of a sacrifice play, but pulling Scandi Recon, you know, one of the best communities here to PvP uh, over on the side. But it looks like a majority of Blue Four are now still going for the objective itself. I think they're going to be able to encircle and eliminate the cash position in Abad. Now, Roven is a bit of a wild card right here. He's still on no kills. But he is in a position to potentially start picking people up. I think he's looking over at the uh, X-Ray unit. We're seeing one of the M2 Humvees firing at a rock formation up here. Roven just fired. I think he was trying to pick off the M2 gunner while they were firing to drown out the sound. Which was a great call, but unfortunately he missed. Just heard some AT fire into the compound. Looks like that shot went over. He might have been going for some of the buildings that... Uh, oh. Green 4 was occupying here. Looking through the kill counts here, Scandi... Okay, Flux has gotten two kills as a marksman. But that is it. Another small round coming into this fortified building. That was Tom Exposition. Oh, this X-Ray. Uh, did X-Ray still hold there? Yeah, now they're being pushed by Scandi. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're in trouble. Fire. Uh, at someone completely over Scandi and has now just completely exposed every single yeah. location. Sven managed to get one kill, Wolf almost got another, but it's just 
Now Jack's finally doing what he should have done. No, stop. So then just run. blew up. Run, man. Yeah, Jack's gonna bandage instead. Nope, he turns around to reload his gun. But no, Scandy's gonna push these guys. Doesn't matter how much you're bleeding. Bleed times in FNF are really ridiculously slow. Unless you have like. So that's a Wolfer ones. down there, and they're gonna continue to push up. Uh, now you're starting to see some run. of Blue Four getting on top of. Uh, I mean, we got sideways from Papega in here, but this is the other group that was here. They had Coda and all the other guys on the building, but they were taken out early on by Overwatch elements. Uh, and they're distracted because more Tyler Blue Four guys are pushing in the open. Robin's Jack, still chilling right away. here. Jack, just run. Jack, just no. Just don't pull out the sniper. You're not going to kill Periton. No, he's going for the motor. No, he's... Oh, dear. You're not going to kill Periton because you have every single level, every single level of fucking... Chuck! I'm waiting Chuck! to see Gabian turn right and see this head moving. No, Katz is about to annihilate him. Yep. Oh, my God. I can't tell uh, if Katz or Periton got the kill, though, because both uh, of them were pushed on him. Katz on three kills, by the way, so we got three uh, of those elements. Really uh, Perton on me. one, so both of those guys are able to wipe the entire team up there. So good on them, but yeah, no, Green 4 really fumbling here. But I, I figured it might have played this way because they were committing nothing on early offense with those mm. Dishka Helixes. I haven't even seen either of those Dishka Helixes in play yet. You know what I mean? Well, I see one oh, over yeah. at the other objective, but where was the other one? You know? Where is the other one? I have no, no idea. Was it being driven? It might have be been driven by Platoon HQ if now dismounted. Quite possibly. I'm gonna just have to look around him. I, I still can't believe Robin's still alive, and he is expertly now behind this blue four group. My question is, can he get some headshots and actually thin that blue four group out? He's trying. But he's in a he really, just... really... He it may, may look like he's in a really nice spot. He's actually in a really, really precariously, like, shit spot. Yeah, his shot just went over Johnson's head, but Blue 4 doesn't realize they're being shot from the rear because they think it might be from their own Overwatch element. Because he's, he's looking downhill with all these bushes, so he's being yep. blocked by, like, a bunch of stuff. So he's actually in a terrible position. He could crawl up behind and pick people yeah. off from the rear. I mean, that's what we need to see happen. Oh, we need to see if Blue 4 Overwatch uh, will pick him off. Command for Green 4 is dead. That was tender. Yeah, he was up here on his own. This M2 Humvee came around. Yep. Uh, Schneider got the kill there. They're forcing Kerry to go into cover. I, I think the situation just went bad for worse yeah. for uh, Green 4 here. Explosives were used on Sideways building. Sideways is now stuck in the corner. He's playing uh, dead in the debris. I think because Sideways was able to get a kill. Uh, yeah, you see in front of him, there's a Blue 4 body. So I think uh, Blue 4 did the right thing. They pulled back, put a satchel on that building, and now they're going to clear it out. That's an expert oh, call Rory. here. Is Rory going to be able to see him? He does. Yeah, he tries, but immediately gets countered. Swollen now coming up. An explosive satchel thrown. Hold on. No, they Marty don't. Marty Dom. Building might get taken out the 2600s, and I told you. I told you. Damn. I didn't see that building. So sideways getting uh, two kills officially. That third kill by Rory getting taken oh, out. Roven's got one kill. Otherwise, see, just a few really casualties like here. Body. Yep, I see he's, um. yeah, we got two bodies up here. We got uh, Guzman down. Rory, Rory trying to get hits. Pierce. Gets a headshot on Blue Four Commander. Both commands are dead. Aslan looking around. Are both commanders down for Why Blue Four? No, Corvax so still there. Aslan looking around, wondering what's going on. And Roven can't get this damn headshot. Roven, my man, come on. Come on. Get the headshot. Roven. Great pickoff on Blue 4 Command, though. He's still just sitting still. Shoot him. He's shooting at someone else now. He switched targets because he got frustrated they couldn't get it. But if he can stay behind these guys, Dude, continue to pick them off like this, death, he could he could come behind these three guys and pick them off as well that are stuck medicating. Uh, yeah, he might be able to help turn the number South tide around. But now, looking at the rest of the force, what we need to see the remainder of Green 4 do in this sector is they're not playing to win and keep the cash alive. They're playing purely to kill as many people as they can so the other half of the defense can wither out the 12% uh, number advantage that Blue 4 had. Now, we do have Papega here. 
in a limited quantity. They could still turn this around. Flux on four kills, by the way, with that SVD. Multiple small rounds going into these buildings as well. Blue Fort desperately trying to pick off who they can. Blue but I could see... Drop the bag here. I could still see Green Fort turn this around. And it's mainly because of Roven here. Uh, cutting the head off the snake by eliminating Blue Fort Command here. He's still trying to get a few more kills. He but if, if he is aggressive, he could follow the smoke trail. My man. My man. Dude, go up to a body. Get like a 249 if you can. I don't think it's probably Yeah, there isn't a 249 here, oh, but... just get an M4 because the... the bullet, yeah, for the um, weapon uh, PID. Yeah. That would screw over them uh, screw them over too. And he could continue to get behind this group and eliminate them. He's trying to find. Barrett coming yeah, yeah. in. No. He Catches Tom. And manages to get Tom, but Guy Fury able to flank from the uh, building there. Here comes Roven. I guess Fox Roven getting taken out by that too. Mark 11 on Drachen. Uber Pyro, thanks so much Here for the 7 month reset, my man. I hope you keep enjoying the operations. Hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. I could see Roven doing something Roven amazing like here. He could he could completely wipe this flank. Uh, alleviate the remaining guys of Pega. And then these guys could then turn around and get some more kills across the way. Roven. Runs up to Aslan, gets a Killery Clinton on him! Multiple shots to the back of the head. I rule and that as a suicide. The smoke. And now he's he hidden in the smoke. smoke. Rovin, my man. He continues moving up. He searched people. He knows there's people over here. And he's this is a great right example of how you capitalize on a good situation. I think Wise just threw an explosive into this building. That's going to kill Arma Jesus. There it is, Ooh. the knockout. Oh, well, here comes Thompson running straight up into Roven. Gets, gets him. him. Wise turns around and sees him, though. Roven immediately falls into the smoke. He's going to flank around on the right side. Great call. Yeah, reloading. Wise Newton immediately coming Wise. around to be aggressive here. Roven might catch Wise. Trying to line up the headshot. Unable to. Misses the shots. Gets Wise. Newton coming around, though. I think he's going to get him. Oh, uh, great run, though. That is exactly. And then Arma Jesus gets him. Four kills. Great run. Five that is exactly. How you capitalize on this situation. This is going to allow Guy Fear and Arma Jesus to turn this 2v2 into a... Uh, now it's a 3v2, but I think Arma Jesus and Guy Fear can hold this out. Because these are two of the best Wise players here. Up. Never mind, Wise wakes up and kills Arma Jesus. Okay, might not be enough, but still, that was great. I did just cast a cursive. I'm so sorry. He's actually going to... Guy Fear is going to catch Ant here. There Thanks it is. Great shot by Wise. Guy... F oh, freaking... Guzman, though. But coming around, but he's unable to get there quick enough. Now you got Blue Four folding in the QRF on the rear. 29 minutes remaining. Guzman looking for him. Does Guy hear him? Guy hears the footsteps. He knows. Explosives being thrown on the buildings. Green Four has a small garrison on the rear. Guzman looking around. I think Guy here is going to be able to get a flanking shot on him. If he leaves the building, I think he's going to play defensive right now because he doesn't know where those footsteps came from. Goes through the window. I think he saw Guzman go into that building. Now we're going to see Guy Fury come out and be aggressive. Blue Four folding in their Overwatch element as well. So Guy Fury eventually needs to move. Otherwise, he will get overwhelmed by the remaining forces on the outskirts. Now, here's the question. Can the remaining Green Four guys get another 5 to 10 kills? Which is very unlikely, but can they get a few more kills to even out the number advantage so Blue Four can't then win against the remaining objective? That is what this match is now, match is now for at this point. Malin breaching Ooh. it. I think he just got a kill. Yeah, he did. And now it's just up to Esco, who got a good hit, but he's staying stacked. Malin going airborne. He is dead. Now I got Yanni breaching in. Esco switching positions here. A little bit of pre fire from Yanni. He's able to spot Esco as he turns away. Now it's up to Guy Fieri and all of Blue Man. Four. The, the southern flank has come up. Go bug down. You're right. You do have bogged in over here. Blue Iander trying to put grenades in there. That grenade's going to be near Nemesis. Actually wounds Nemesis from that angle. He got a lot of pre-fire in the building here. Uh, ah, they're firing at the cache. Oh. Guy Fury gets another kill. <laughs> well, He's on five. Way too early. Get some double taps. Got Blue Four. If you guys turn around, trying to look for this building. Professional noob trying to breach. Guy Fury being shot at by Mistbeer. Neither side able to land a hit here. Guy Fieri, I'm seeing a few more blood hits there, so... Every time there's a blood slotch, it means you got hit. Great kill on Mistbeer there. 
Gets the double taps. Professional Noob might try to move in. He tries to get a hit on Matsura. Professional Noob gets a few hits on Guy Fieri. Guy Fieri being aggressive. Now Matsura's turned around. He's engaging. Guzman also engaging from Overwatch. Oh my god, Guy Fieri. Yeah, he got keyholed by Professional Noob, but that was a great last stand there. And six kills. Six kills. That's exactly what he needed to do to continue to weather the storm. So green for are down 40% of their force, give or take, but blue for... Oh, they still have that number advantage for one scene, but it's much less than 12%. I'd say probably 5 to 8% at this point, based on the fact that Charlie 1 is nearly fully eliminated. You got a lot of alpha elements down. You got platoon lead into IC down as well. Blue 4 is probably not going to do a coordinated attack on this remaining AO, which means Green 4 might be able to take it down. Smaller forces going into that AO, defeat them in detail and still win. This could be the turnaround all because of Roven sniping Pierce. And I don't know where Korvac went down. He was in a Humvee uh, overwatching the Green 4 HQ. And I guess a sniper picked him off because that Humvee is also uh, out in the open. Grenade going on Guy Fury's position. That's going to finish him. Yeah, literally threw that in his crotch and just blew his dick off to high hell. Nice. Oh, man. 25 minutes remaining. Half the time has been elapsed. Now we're going to see if Blue 4 is able to uh, have someone pick up the plan and continue to push, or if we're going to see multiple different forces push in. And I think we're going to just start seeing those forces push in in different angles. We already got Scandi Recon pushing up with a truck in a valley to the north. We have another Humvee pushing around. This is Alpha HQ just driven by solo by Norris. Uh, we could see Blue 4 just defeat themselves in detail now because they don't have that cohesion anymore. Here comes Alpha HQ for some ungodly reason. Thanks. But no, if, if Green 4 is able to turn this around, I'm giving full credit. Oh, yeah. To, to, to uh, Guy Fieri and uh, what's his name? Roven. Oh. I've already forgot his I name. know, I, I completely blanked out to have the memory of a I goldfish, he, but... Yeah, no, he disconnected, so... Yeah, still, I great, great play on him, because oh, yeah. he was able to snipe Blue 4 Command, and now Blue 4 is probably going to just, you know, send their forces in piecemeal, and Green 4 should be able to hold. Now, a little worried, though. First group going in, Scandi Recon. And they're now the toughest troops on the field. Look at all the Green 4 guys up on this uh, building, though. <laughs> One HE round up here yeah, is all it takes. And I think that's going to be GG, in all honesty. That is like a fourth of their units up there for Green 4. And at that point, I think even uncoordinated attacks are going to be able to weather down what Green 4 has remaining here. Roving behind enemy lines. Hell yeah. 24 minutes remaining. Just going to confirm. Yep, the cache is destroyed. I don't see it on the map anymore in terms of its symbol area. Yeah, it's Sam sniping with an iron sight. I don't think he's shooting at anything out there, though. I don't know what he's aiming at, but you got Shy and Green Thumb suppressing that big group of blue four on Overwatch as Bravo 1 now pushes in. Uh, wow. We might actually see... No, Scandi's going for a wide flank around. Oh, that could bite Green 4 in the ass. Literally. But now you have the, uh, the M2 Humvee being solo driven up. And we got Fred solo driving one of the Pilixes, so he might actually go up and counterattack the Humvee as it takes some pretty heavy fire. Norris getting knocked to his feet, takes another bullet, and gets Ooh. annihilated by... Literally four dudes online in this stupid building. And then Fred drives down immediately. gets killed off by uh, Blue 4 driving down there. I have no idea why he decided to drive on his own over there, but that was a bit of a bad call. I don't know. Just looking at the numbers, though, just all the Blue 4 marks compared to Green 4. Blue 4 still have that number advantage. And now that they're actually starting to do a bit of a coordinated attack here, I think they're going to be able to overpower and overwhelm what remains of Green Force position despite not having a commander. Sam is exposed, trying to use the pillar as cover, but I think Scandi's going to be able to find and pick him off. AT fire, that was at the, uh, the Dishka Humvee, or excuse me, uh, Dishka Hillux. That's the word I'm looking for. Good guy. 
Dingo's going for Those it? Those PKM Humvees, but not Dishka Humvees. Dingo's going for it. Oh, Scandia was spotted by Green 4 Delta 2. Immediately, one of them is picked off. Dingo's going for They're the trying hooks. to realign the cord. And I, I don't know why Dingo's going for it. Tackleberry firing up, I think, the wheels? Shot out on the wheel, he's just shooting the shit out of the Vic, gets the other wheel. Yep, that's not going to be used anymore because all Vic's only have a single spare wheel on them. Uh, I wonder if Sam has been told about that advance and has turned around at this point. Well, he's being shot at, so he's going to know now. 21 minutes to hold, I don't see it. No. We're going to have two different attacks from two separate directions. Green 4 might be able to hold, but that's only going to buy time for the rest of the Blue 4 to come in. Uh, maybe Dingo? I mean, he already got shot, though, and I think Grav is coming up to flank. And he's got long range on his back. I'm waiting to see an HE round kill these five guys mm. on the rooftop. I want to see it. I don't think anyone has any more. Uh, As still has his small, and he's loading it. Well, he's getting it ready. He fires it, Greg. Ah, so we have another element of Scandi down here, too. So it's the two pincers of Scandi that are still alive that have actually come down. Dingo now getting into a one-on-three in the northern side. I think he just got a kill. No, he did not. Never mind. Yeah. Nader's getting blown up by the HE round. Uh, he is down... Scandi showing their aggression here and the really good tactics of this one pincer. And they might actually pull this off. We do have a Dishka now firing from the flank, but the smoke cover's too thick. Well, it's not cover, concealment technically. Yanni with a great headshot on a dude on the second story because there's just not a lot of good cover here. Explosive trap going off, knocking out Iander and Malin. Oof. And the charge going over? Oh, yeah, so it might have been Kabaya throwing charges over. That's going to get some kills. At least in the double tap sense. Get some both. And that, yep, that was Kabaya with some really good thinking there. It doesn't credit him with the kills, though, because of um, the script required to make explosives be throwable for Ace. But that was a great call. Just absolutely denying that attack. That's going to slow it down. Arcor now solo charging with that RPG. But Green Form might have just bought them a few moments there. Dingo still alive on the north, fighting that 1v4 now. And you're seeing another large squad from Blue 4 coming around on the northern side as well. 19 minutes remaining. I don't know. Let's go either way. We got an X-Ray member for Blue 4, Tymek, firing suppressed shots out at the Dishka car. That's Olaf, forcing him to pull back on foot. Yanni getting another great kill. He's being shot at by Seismo, though. Yanni on four, uh, Arcor just knocked out by Patriot coming around to flank, uh, moving up behind this rock. If he goes up a bit more, he might spot Saddam, uh, but he is headshotted by N1 coming around the uh, his left side. Great flanks we're seeing all across the board. Uh, that Dishka Hillux on the north finally blows up. Dingo's still alive, stalling this northern assault, making them suppress up in his direction, showing that Blue Four does not know where they are, trying to buy time for Green Four to continue on their flanks to um, eliminate these other blue four elements coming up, but actually it is starting to work out for him. Looking at the number of bodies on Damn. both sides now, it is starting to look a little even. Great thinking by <laughs> Kabaya. How's Falcon doing? He's still alive. He's got no kills yet, but another really good player on reserve still ready to go. The Falcon's still sitting in that fucking corner. He's not moved. Don't now the moving. biggest threat is going to be that main attack wave coming up from the northeast because they're going to be within striking distance of the cache itself. And then Sam holding this Minerot area as four members of just killed Pega come up. Scanny come up on him. Oh, is that Timek pushing up on his yeah. own? Was he picked off? Yeah, Olaf got the kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not surprised there. Mm -hmm. Olaf really good with the CQC. Well, again, so if we were to see an HE round get up here, as I say that, one of the guys on the rooftops picked off by a sniper. Uh, was that DJ? That might have been DJ. He's on one kill, and Arcane is on one. So DJ, great headshot there with his uh, red dot. You got Nader's now coming up here, firing down. We got Saddam unconscious. You got uh, Yanni unconscious. 
It's now a 3v1. I think the southern side is now safe at this point. It's the northern one that I'm concerned about. But it's all open ground if they continue. And when I say they, I mean Green 4 here continues to hunker down the second story here. They'll be able to cover it. But because they're now being suppressed from the northeast, they might not be able to stop this push. And all Blue 4 needs to do is get that squad in this compound, put a satchel or an explosive charge on that cache, and it's GG. Cash itself, by the way, is right here. Oh, there's an M2 Humvee in play. Blue Force still has it. They got windows rolled down. They're going to suppress that rooftop into an infantry oh push. It's a, it's a rush. It actually worked. It actually worked. Oh my god, they dropped a charge out the window. They dropped a charge out the window. They dropped a satchel out the window. They threw. It's only a charge. No, it's not. It's a satchel. You're right. It might have been a satchel. Was, I just might have seen it at a different angle. That, that was, was a great play. That was honestly that was, that was the most beautiful play I've ever one seen of the best plays I've seen in FNF because now that knocks out the building and now you're going to start seeing Blue 4 pushing forces and Swola going first on his own. A little bit of a bad idea in my opinion, but he's. I think they're checking to see if that uh, building had the uh, thing in it. And Swola, I mean, he's got more explosives, but he immediately gets flanked by Ace and taken out. How unfortunate. I think Blue 4 guessed that the charge, or excuse me, the cache was in there because everyone was on the rooftop mm -hmm. rather than it just being a good position. You're seeing explosives thrown on the Minarat building where G Legs is also up, but it doesn't get destroyed because they sent it to Invincible. Oh, that's funny. Oh, there's that should have right killed Sam. Oh, they almost died. Oh, man. Green 4 doing a great job with explosives. Uh, the gunner of that M2 getting taken out. AT um, hitting it. I think that just killed another guy because I saw a massive blood splatter there. Driver's down. Uh, the only person still alive in there is on the right side. He quickly, I think, just switched to the... No, he's just jumping around siege trying to avoid fire. Green 4 really whittled down here, but a lot of blue 4 still up on the northern side. This could really swing either way, but it's leaning to green 4 right now because defenders advantage on these numbers. Oh, this is tense. Sam getting a kill. Nash trying to come around. Another blue four guy in this uh, area got killed because Olaf is flanking. And Olaf gets another kill. And that is all the Scandi recon members from the west now taken out. Blue four, however, again, they have this big force. They're right next to the cache. We just saw a blue four guy come up and bar blow his head off. That was great. But we need to see green four now fold their forces back to defend the cache site itself because blue four can still pull the rug out from green four's nose Ooh, and win this. Kane getting cool. a great kill there. Kabubi trying, Kabubi with, trying with the MG. He doesn't want to risk that peek out though. Takes a grenade hit. Skip back up. Bar still covering from this area. Oh my god. What is up with all the bodies going airborne today? Good god. Daryl pushes in. Panics because it's still going to skip his and skip takes him out. We need to. Uh, Blue Force pushing everything up here. They got Gimboju with explosives here. If he identifies that the cache is on this building, they just have to throw a satchel on it. It's GG. So very close game right now. We need to see the rest of Green Force start folding in. We do see some of them getting uh, on positions to uh, cover the open area, but it isn't enough. And Gimboju's dead. There goes the explosive guy. Green 4 might be able to hold, but Blue 4, they still have Guzm, who's an explosive specialist. This could still swing either way. This is very, very close. But again, I think because Roven sniped Blue 4 command, Blue 4 didn't coordinate this properly. Kilo trying to medic a dead body. Ace might come around and look down. But it might be too low for him to notice. Oh, oh, oh. You hear the medical? Come on, Ace. Kabooby. I think Kiko just saw him. Okay, yeah, I'm I'm not surprised there. That was that was silly. When your FOV is too low. Skip coming up gets the shot on Kiko. Wow, well, I just heard a beep beep. Uh Skip just threw a satchel on his own position. Okay. And survived. Okay. Never mind. What a chat. Guzman's the last one left. Green 4, I think, one. Guzman's the last one left, but he's an explosive specialist, so... We've got, I think, four left for Blue 4, Grav, DJ, Guzman, and Sushi. But what a crazy freaking turnaround. I mean, Blue 4 played this masterfully, especially with the vehicle charge with the explosives. But 
at the end of the day, I mean, they're attacking through open terrain with only concealment with bushes. Uh, and their attack was still uncoordinated. Again, Green Four is able to repel one side, repel that side, and then repel the northern side back to back to back without any coordination, which I think Pierce would have been able to provide when he coordinated that first attack. So you have that successful attack and then a failed attack. But again, it's not game over yet because Guzman, he's an explosive specialist. He could get up here, find it, and then throw it. But caught in the open. He just got hit. Lolo put more shots on him. Now I think Ooh. it's GG in all honesty. Very close round. Sushi, I think, is going to stay back. Is he the sniper? No, he but he, yeah, he's just a spotter, but he hasn't gotten any kills. He's DJ still coming up. He's on one kill. N1 unconscious. And the Humvee with Grav is just driving around back there. I have a question. Where the hell is Falcon? Oh, he's dead. No killed in the corner. Amazing. DJ flanked and killed by Pepe. Yeah, it's it's over. Fight's over. Yeah, watch they watch them not call it now. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised with how tense that got. But as I predicted, if if Green if Blue Four Command went down, no one would coordinate that second attack, and Green Four was just able to hold that defensive line. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Grav. Skip immediately knocks them unconscious. Oh. Oh, that was great. And there's the double tap by Peppet. Oh, man. What was that? He tried. You know, if he got that uh, incendiary on the cache, he would have eventually cooked it off unless someone ran up and grabbed it and killed themselves trying to throw it away. He tried. He tried. Sushi coming up. He is now being shot at. Looking through some of the kill feeds here. I mean, Olaf on those three. Sushi now getting walked up on by Sam and eliminated. I'm going to be honest. Let me look at Sam real quick. Two kills there. He's about to get his third on Sushi. He took a 240 Bravo. I mean, Papaya didn't really get that many. I'm just trying to quickly see. G-Legs on five with the Marksman Rifle. I know Flux got four. No, he also got five with the Marksman Rifle. Guy Fieri on six. Are you doing the last round? Uh, yeah, Skip got four kills, K on two. Uh, it was also Caballo with those throwable explosive charges that knocked out that southern attack. I mean, that was... That was intense. Like, that was a very good round compared to the last one. Um, just the right things happened. Yeah, go ahead. 